All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and now welcome to a game, Lamez versus Hipposaur. This game taking place here on Springtime version one. I guess opening up with that classic. All right, all right. While looking to the side, um, well, I finally remembered why I do that. It's to make sure all of my audio settings are looking good, and because I'm not streaming on Twitch right now, um, well, no one to tell me if my microphone isn't working, like what happened yesterday. Anyways, let's go ahead and break things down in this human mirror match. Lamez spawning as the blue human on the top left hand side of the map. Meanwhile, Hipposaur spawning under the name Hipposaurier um, in the yellow trunks. It is going to be a standard altar of King's Barracks farm coming in from both sides. No crazy, crazy tavern heroes as we are expecting to see an ar either an Archmage or a Mountain King. But then again, the other heroes have become popular as of late or just as a little bit of um, a non-standard game. We'll see what will be presented to us as a Hipposaur going for that Archmage and, well, Lamez doing a Paladin first. All right, Paladin first, getting that early Holy Light in order to heal up units. Originally, I had thought that early Paladin was the stronger hero back in the Reign of Chaos beta days. Oh, how that does take me back 20 plus years ago. Um, where the Paladin was able to heal, keep those footmen alive and, and heal them. Um, I later quickly realized that the Water Elemental could do pretty much the same exact thing of mitigating damage by, well, the Water Elemental absorbing and soaking all of that early damage instead of forcing to try and heal up any damage that was um, dealt to my unit. So, uh, early, uh, I guess my little progression of going from Paladin first to Archmage first here in Warcraft 3. Coming back around, we're looking at Militia now getting called out. Archmage already on the run. Should have dropped a Water There's Elemental or will be dropping like a Water Elemental here in just a second. Here we are, here we go, going after this Sasquatch creep camp. Meanwhile, one footman making its way down, trying to do a bit of scouting and is going rather far. Uh, not actually scouting, actually going after the Forest Troll High Priest, pulling away the aggro from the Sasquatch and picking up an Ice Troll Priest here. An early Ice Troll Priest with a Paladin. That is an interesting combination to work together. The Ice Troll Priest can do an occasional heal, but um, well, if it lets the Paladin do the majority of it, what we're going to end up seeing is more abolished magic coming in from that Ice Troll Priest as he doesn't have a brilliant aura in order to try and maintain that mana. Coming back the other side here, well, Paladin picking up a crystal ball and scouting out. It does spot that there as the Archmage has to be very careful. All right, getting in some easy damage onto that Ice Troll Priest. Ice Troll Priest down to 181 points of damage already as we could be going into an engagement. All right, one Water Elemental is all that is left. Are we going to see some abolished magic onto that Water Elemental there? No, we are not. This Ice Troll Priest taking quite a bit of damage. Down to 48, needs a Holy Light and gets it just in time as we're now going after all of these units. More abolished magic. Magic needs to go down here as the Arcane Tower is about to get um, complete. There goes another peasant getting taken down, trying to finish off some of those units, taking down another one there. Are we going to look at a Holy Light? Yes, saving another unit once more. But Paladin is currently low on mana, and the Ice Troll Priest has not really been using that Abolish Magic as I thought he would um, at this point and stage in the game. Completely just rotating and running around. Lamez actually um, using a lot of time to travel the map, but really not getting much out of it. All right, double backing around here, but the Arcane Tower should be nearing completion. Footman going to try to dive on in. There's that Arcane Tower, and if it wasn't a good idea to deal damage before, it, it's not going to be a, a good idea now. We're going to see a Hipposaur easily, easily take down this Ice Scroll Priest. That's taken down um, at the hands and, and denied there. There's going to be an axe in the back by the Ice Troll Berserker. You are the weakest link, as Lemez says to his, uh, well, Lemez says to his units, if you can't help me, you're just going to help help my opponent so let me well get rid of those units coming back across here a scouting footman has scouted out of that well proxy farm a little bit of damage still going across here are we going to see another deny no archmage ends up getting that last attack right there as the archmage does have claws of attack plus four and is now looking to retreat back again 
Town Hall, um, well, about halfway done so far as the Footmen are looking to, well, battle it up once more. The Paladin still doesn't have that much mana, and that just goes to show you how important mana is during the early stages of the game. The Paladin, without any mana, is not going to be able to heal up any more units. Meanwhile, the Archmage uh, should be able to continue to drop more Water Elementals and is now trying to run away, but his own Footman actually getting in ahead of him here. Arcane Bolt also getting added in once more. Scout Farm farm about to get um, taken down as we see a new ice troll priest trained up by, by Lamez. We tech to tier 2 nearly done. That is the one advantage he has over Hipposaur right now that he has that tech advantage and perhaps can go for a second hero if needed. A tavern hero, a Naga Sea Witch, something with an immediate impact. Otherwise, Hipposaur is going to gain too much momentum with um, the boosted economy out of this extra base. All right, units trying to all well, recollect, regather at this expo here. Footman, Water Elemental backing away from this mercenary camp. That scout, f or well, that farm by the mercenary camp has been destroyed as both sides go back to perhaps retreat and regroup. Archmage, still sitting on 2.2 experience and didn't really gain that much there. It does pick up an additional scroll of regeneration just in case it's necessary as we see him bypass this 655 creep camp. Meanwhile, Paladin on his way get, trying to get to level 3 and you can see springtime here. You, uh, difficult to spot where your op opponent is. They are right next to each other and just now spotted. Footman with the fend able to reflect back some of that damage but unable to chase as well the riflemen are, are going to be taking some damage here. Still no secondary hero coming in from Lamez. Perhaps it is getting trained up, going straight to Castle with a Blood Mage as the second hero. Alright, so perhaps going to try to go straight into Knights or perhaps Griffins to get in that necessary damage. Are we going to see another Holy Light? Yes, we are. Footman down to 212 hit points and somehow still able to stay alive after all this time. Archmage, no boots of speed, but still moving around pretty quickly. Siphon mana into the Paladin. Paladin needs to then use Holy Light onto that Footman here. And I guess uh, what the Blood Mage is thinking is, I, if I have as long if, as long as I can take my opponent's mana, I will be fine. Water Elementals are going to be stalling out here pretty quickly as we see a couple of Holy Lights, but the Paladin's cooldown on Holy Light still a little bit of an issue. Meanwhile, a good deny by Hipposaur there to deny the experience on that Water Elemental as the Archmage is quickly going to find himself alone. No more mana, no more water elementals. That is going to be a problem. Meanwhile, Paladin sitting at level 2, nearing level 3. And that's really where the Paladin, if it can take this level advantage, suddenly those holy lights are going to be that much more effective and, well, that much more deadly. Griffin Aviary, only one being trained up here as we're looking at Rifleman still reaching back here. Footman trying to dive on in and there is no defense inside the base of Lamez. All right, are we going to see a scroll of Town Portal? Units are trying to retreat back here. No siphon mana. Uh, Lamez getting caught completely unaware. Now having to try and defend his home base with just militia while he's upgrading to castle. All right. A, a potential surround though. Archmage is going to be forced to use the Scroll of Town Portal and it does use the Scroll of Town Portal in a time as well the tech to tier 3 is nearing completion. Griffin Aviary is done. More peasants working on the farm um, to increase that supply limit. One farm available off to the north here. Perhaps another one going to um, well rotate on over. Archmage bringing his army of footmen over. Griffins now getting it trained up. We're looking at 42 supply compared to 45. Three more Griffins will need to be added. And if the Blood Mage is able to keep the water elementals at bay with the help of siphon mana, suddenly the appearance of a two to three griffins is going to completely destroy this footman army. All right, footman, ar footman now looking to dive on in here, perhaps try to get some damage onto some of these units. Lamez doesn't have that much gold. Staff of Teleportation inbound. Archmage finds his spot, and here we are, here we go. Both sides trying to fight their way through. Ice Troll Priest able to well, make its way inside here as the griffin now shows up um, on the fight here. Ar Archmage is well, hiding inside this base beautifully. One griffin, is it going to be enough to turn the tide here? As you can see, well, those footmen with um, 
with Defend and not going to be that effective as the Blood Mage not gets up to level 2. Paladin is at level 3. There's some Holy Light there. And suddenly, Hipposaur needs to back away. Hipposaur, with a large bank of gold, was sitting on over um, 1,400 just a second ago, needs to consider how to use his gold here as he does pick up a panda as a second hero. That AOE Breath of Fire should be extremely helpful. But the question now is, is the tech advantage with those Hipposaurs, or, or not with, with those Hipposaurs, with those Griffins going to be... Um, Going to be going to be able to overpower Hipposaur's army. All right, units getting could get easily caught in transit here. There's another footman now making its way off to the north. Blood Mage Paladin now looking to dive on in. As you can see, Arcane Tower. Are we looking at any siphon mana? No, banish. There is a divine shield trying to take down some of this here. A flame strike would be extremely helpful, but the peasants are just able to constantly repair here as the Blood Mage is running out of all of his mana. That is a major, major setback. One now down. Hipposaur no longer. Hipposaurus Arcane Tower is doing their job as the Blood Mage out of mana here. Meanwhile, off to the north, double Griffins trying to finish off some of those footmen are able to do exactly that. We're looking at 45 over 54 supply as the Water Elemental could easily get, uh, well, bursted down as well. Remember, Water Elementals also have heavy armor, so the Water Elemental could easily get bursted down as well. The, uh, well, the Griffins really need to catch up to the footmen before they... Um, before they try and um, throw that hammer. It's one of those situations where you're trying to catch up to your dream, and just because you're within range of your dream it doesn't mean that you're close enough to actually take it down yet. All right, um, we're looking at, well, one... Oh, come on, finish off that water elemental. That would... All right, no, not going to finish off that water elemental at all, as the expo here now finally going to be in a little bit of trouble. There's a breath of fire blowing over a dark... An ice troll there as the guard tower is continuing to well, get repaired. Level 2 masonry upgrades, the big deal there as the griffin ends up surviving. I think I saw the guard tower arrow inbound, but the griffin able to teleport away in time. Getting up an arcane vault, perhaps to try and get um, some staff of sanctuaries, saving these high, um, well, high value uh, targets. The Griffin Rider at 8, well, 47, 48. It will staff a Sanctuary cooldown and get him back up to full. Meanwhile, Hipposaur has gone into Dragonhawk Riders, and that economic advantage is really, really strong. 57 supply compared to 48. He was able to catch up, get to Tier 3 quickly as well, also get a Paladin of his own. And it looks like Hipposaur will have an enough to deal with any griffins if if and when the time comes there goes one there goes a nope it looks like the it was canceled or broken right there not quite sure what um what happened there overall as the dragon hawk riders are trying to line things up as well it looks as though yes the night animal war training upgrade is completed as well still no sign of uh, well yeah animal war training completed here as the dragon that as the Dragonhawk Riders look to dive on in. Once more, Lamez's base is completely wide open here, and we may be ending up into a base sen trade scenario. Lamez has spent so much time tactically walking back and forth that his army just feels like it's constantly not in the right position. Trying to get in into this position here now, try to dive on in. Archmage uh, could drop some more water elementals. Is going to be able to do so? No, it is not. Running out of mana to do exactly that as the Blood Mage gets a quick banish on himself to try and stay alive. As we see shackles now go down onto the Griffin Riders. Knights are showing up to the party, but the Rifleman able to shoot them down quickly as the Griffin Riders are trying to, well, turn the tide back here. It looks as though a couple of those units are going to get taken down. There goes one Hipposaur uh, uh, banishing one of his own, or getting one of his knights banished, but the Griffin Riders did not switch to attack that target. Yeah, a banished knight ends up taking a lot of damage from those Griffin Riders. Bonus damage for the heavy armor, bonus damage for the ethereal state, as we see a Goblin Tinker as the third and final hero. Uh, those rockets are going to be great at stunning down those Dragonhawk Riders, and perhaps 
allowing those griffins to do a little bit more. All right, in comes the units in. Goblin Tinker is nearby. We're looking at more guard towers being placed down. Are they going to get burst down very quickly? Yes, they are. Riflemen are going to be able to easily finish them off as the Riflemen um, shooting scout towers um, with their light armor really takes them down. All right, Griffin able to find there's a nice giant stun across multiple units paladin could try to get up to level three here units are trying to reposition wherever they can are we going to get a siphon mana yeah siphon mana on to the dragon hawk rider perhaps we should be going after the archmage as well archmage is going to get enough mana should be able to drop a water elemental here in just a moment no hipposaur not on top of the mana here as we're looking at a couple of shackles now going down 62 supply compared to 49 as this tactical scroll of town portal to retreat but well, scrolls of town portals do not grow on trees. They cost 350 gold each. So is the Paladin going to try and buy another one for this repeat tactic? Yes, he will. Meanwhile, we're still looking at Hipposaur running up on these two bases. Major economic advantage, but he still has yet to really, really pull away from his opponent. Lemez only down in army size by a, about four supply. And, well... It's really going to come down to positioning then. All right, a little bit of damage here. Are we going to see a Staff of Sanctuary? Rifleman trying to shoot down that uh, Griffin Rider. There's a stun, but, well, you got to aim at the feet where that Dragonhawk Rider was. That Dragonhawk Rider is actually in the air, so that was actually positioned in a little bit of a tough spot. There goes another stun, but once more out of position again. One Dragonhawk Rider trying to finish off this Dragon... Uh, or one Griffin Rider trying to finish off the Dragonhawk Rider, unable to do so. And a fight in the woods with this crescent-shaped... Um, well, patch of trees and well both sides just trying to get sight on each other all right breath of fire taking down that rifleman there blowing him over 47 supply compared to 67 hipposaur continuing to try and shut down these griffin riders constantly shackling them as the units are now looking to back away again however double level up blood mage now at level three paladin now at level two is that what is needed to try and gain a little bit of that advantage breath of fire blowing on over again as we're looking to look at perhaps a knight getting taken down 63 supply compared Compared to 47, more siphon mana, um, trying to remove mana away from the opposing paladin. Are we going to see a holy light onto the goblin tinker? Goblin tinker needs a holy light, and yeah, that is it. Lemez, however, leaves the game. Hipposaur comes away with the victory, and that is the game. All right, Hipposaur with the win right there, and being able to outlast his opponent with the help of that extra economy. Look at the resource difference. Uh, almost, uh, what, 5,000 gold resource difference, even th though he lost 2,000, an additional 2,000 gold to upkeep. So that slightly larger army um, translated to easier wins on the battlefield and then ultimately um, a win overall. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.